Wendy Williams has been in the entertainment industry for decades. Before she had her own talk show, she worked in radio, combining music and celebrity news, and paving the way for other similar formats. She introduced listeners to new hip-hop and R&B artists and was the first to spill the tea. Wendy has been influential in the music industry and in hip-hop culture for decades. Part of her appeal was also the very thing that got her into trouble at times, her mouth. She calls herself a straight shooter, pow pow, but not everyone has appreciated her candor, especially if it meant having their business put out there. Let's take a look at the people she has offended over the years, in the 90s and even today in 2021. Total. It's one thing to offend, but Wendy upset the members of Total so much so they wanted to beat her behind. This is depicted in Wendy's recent biopic on Lifetime. She trash talked them and revealed that they were broke. So much has been revealed about the plight of bad boy artists over the years. But at the time, people only saw the glitz and the glamour and wouldn't have imagined a famous singer or rapper being anything but wealthy. So this was quite the revelation at the time. She also called out Diddy for giving them a bad contract. On her show, Wendy said, I want to tell you something, and this is a real story, and it will be played out in my Lifetime biography, which comes out in February. Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group to beat my ass in front of the radio station. Fact, she said. Apparently, Total came out of a gypsy cab and went straight for her. Lucky for Wendy, she was with her ex-husband, Kelvin Hunter. Yes, Kelvin who she had just started dating. He diffused the situation and sent Total away. And I get downstairs and find this girl group jump out of a gypsy cab to come after me, to kick my ass. And I'm like, for what? You know what I said was true. You all are broke and you were living in the projects. And that was that. Diddy. In 2017, Diddy appeared on Wendy's show. This was a significant milestone in Wendy's career. It's something many thought would never happen. It only took two decades. The two had beef from back in the 90s. Viewers were probably a little nervous watching the interview, not knowing what was going to happen. Especially as Wendy often throws shade at her guests when interviewing them. I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous to come out here. I was drinking some Ciroc in the back. And I, yeah. In 1998, Wendy suggested that Diddy might be gay. He responded by allegedly getting her fired from Hot 97. Diddy wasn't alone in this. Wendy had made the same assertions about a number of different rappers in the 90s, including Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest. At the time, he was dating Angie Martinez. Angie revealed in her autobiography that she nearly had a brawl with Wendy as a result. Diddy and Wendy came full circle a whopping 19 years later. He appeared on her show proving there were no hard feelings. I, I, I must say it's been a long time coming. Yeah. And I want to just tell you how proud I am of you because, because I, I, I don't think you get enough credit for being the first one to really cover our culture, you know, hip hop culture and, and also hip hop celebrities. And, and, and just understanding that it's news, not just saying that's all that you cover, but you started shedding light on our culture and our people, and thank you very much. Thank you. I Little Kim. Little Kim has changed a lot from the early 90s when she first came on the scene. It's no secret, she has had a lot of work done since then. It's Wendy's job to comment on celebrity news. So it was only a matter of time before she shared her opinion on Kim's appearance. She didn't hold back, criticising the rapper's plastic surgery and comparing her to Latoya Jackson. Don't blame photoshopping, blame your plastic surgeon girl, she said. In my mind, I know your goal was always to look like Latoya Jackson. You've out Latoya Latoya in your new look. I... Kim responded by tweeting, Why didn't you show the side by side pic? This pic is photoshopped and you know it, you hating. She also insinuated that Wendy and Biggie Smalls hooked up and that he wanted nothing to do with her afterwards. Tupac Shakur. You know you've messed up 
when Tupac does a diss track against you. That's exactly what happened to Wendy Williams. On the Angie Martinez show, Tupac explained why he didn't like Wendy. It was the moment Tupac declared war against a talk show host. In her memoirs, released in 2016, Angie said this was a pivotal moment in her career. When asked whether he had beef with New York, Tupac said, Nah, I have a beef with anybody in my way. Anybody that feel they could criticise me because they bought my album. That feel like just because they've read an interview, they know who I am. I have beef with them interfering with me, getting my money. I've got beef with Wendy Williams, saying I got raped in jail because that disrespected me, my family and what I represent. I got beef with New York rappers, just saying whatever they want to say about where I'm from. In the song, Shut Your Mouth, he calls Wendy Williams out by name. And in the song, Why You Turn On Me, he tells her to go to Jenny Craig to lose weight. Whitney Houston, one of the most famous riffs involving Wendy, was the one she had with Whitney Houston. The Jersey natives spoke on the phone and the conversation went downhill from the onset. All right. You're very defensive, Whitney. I have to be, Wendy. You talk about me every f***ing day. Well, Whitney, every other day. Whitney you, you keep yourself in the headlines. No, Wendy. Y'all keep me in the headlines. I'm my, my business. I try to maintain what I got. It ended in Whitney saying, if this was back in the day in Newark, I'd meet you outside. Despite this, Wendy paid tribute to Whitney on her show in the aftermath of the singer's death. She seemed visibly shaken and saddened by Whitney's death. But many fans couldn't help but remember their famous feud that stemmed from Wendy making allegations about Whitney's drug use when she herself had admittedly struggled with her own drug problem. Plus, she spoke about Whitney's finances and love life. But ultimately, Whitney's death seemed to be a huge realisation for Wendy. It could just have easily been her. Well, Whitney, I want to thank you. Thank you, Wendy. For giving me this moment and not hanging up the phone. No, I wouldn't do that to you, baby. And being, talk through. And being as sassy as you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Wendy, I love you because you support me and um, you've, been, you've been good to me on the radio. However, you know, why could you say, baby girl? Method Man. Method Man of the Wu-Tang Clan put Wendy on blast many years ago for revealing his wife's battle with breast cancer, something that hadn't even been revealed to their family members at the time. Wendy decided to reveal this on her radio show, Out of the Blue. Method Man was understandably furious with her. It was done by, I'm gonna give you, Wendy Williams did it. All right, her, she's the one that did it. You're gonna attack me any way you want to. I'm in the entertainment business, but you don't attack my family, man. My wife ain't nothing to do with that, man. Had all nothing to do with that. You did not have to do that. Her family members didn't even know she was sick. We still live in our same community where we used to live at. The people that lived around her didn't know she was sick, too. You said that shit. Everybody looking at her, staring at her. You know how uncomfortable that makes somebody feel, especially somebody that's going through chemo? Stupid ass bitch. Bad enough she didn't have her hair on her head. You think she wants people staring at her, pointing at her, talking about how sick she is? Nobody knew anything until Wendy Williams said that shit. Fast forward 2021. Their beef has resurfaced again. And this time, Method Man's wife herself has spoken out. Wendy, who was currently promoting her biopic, revealed that she and Method Man allegedly hooked up one night. Method Man's wife, Tamika, responded to Wendy's revelations with the following statement. For years, I kept my silence while Wendy Williams launched constant verbal attacks against my husband, myself and our family. In the past, I ignored her lies, innuendos and blatant attempts to provoke us. But Wendy has proven again and again that she is incapable of any decency. Her obsession with our lives has reached a new low and I'm tired of taking the high road. Despite my anger, I chose not to respond publicly to her unhealthy fixation with my husband and our marriage. It was clear that she was sick and that she was struggling with a lot of issues, including self-hate and low self-esteem. In an obvious attempt to increase ratings for her sad biopic, her struggling TV show and her burnt out career, Wendy has once again targeted my husband. 
It's a pattern that she has repeated for years. When I was diagnosed with cancer years ago, Wendy shared my personal medical information with her listeners live on air during her radio broadcast. She didn't care that she was violating my right to privacy or that I hadn't shared the news of my diagnosis with my family and friends yet. She never apologised, never expressed any regret whatsoever. Over the years, those issues have made her increasingly ugly, both inside and out. And no amount of plastic surgery can fix the ugliness inside of her. Instead of using her platform to uplift women, she has spent her career attacking marriages while her own fell apart. She criticised celebrities battling addictions despite her own struggles with substance abuse. There's no limit to how low she will go in the name of making headlines. Method Man and his wife have been married for 20 years and thankfully today, Tamika is in good health. One of the most vocal critics of Wendy is rapper 50 Cent. You only have to follow him on Instagram to know his thoughts on her. He is fast gaining the reputation of being a troll. It came to a head when Wendy shared her thoughts on his abilities as a father. He is estranged from his 24-year-old son, Marquise Jackson. Three years ago, 50 took to Instagram making a tongue-in-cheek announcement about a party he was planning to celebrate his son's 21st birthday. Not because he wanted to mark this milestone, no, but because it was the end of his child support payments. 50 received a lot of backlash for his pettiness and ended up apologising. He cited losing his mother at a young age and growing up without a father for his lack of empathy. Reporting on the story, Wendy was unsympathetic and said his childhood trauma was no excuse, especially now that he is in his 40s. Get your life, she said. I don't care that you didn't grow up with a father and that your mom, whatever happened, you know, when you were eight and that you were shot nine times. You're 42. You got a 21 year old son. You know, get, get your life. He responded on social media like he usually does and mentioning her husband's affair and telling her to focus on her own problems. In the weeks that followed, he made posts about her looks, comparing her to the beast in Beauty and the Beast, made light of her former drug use, and didn't even ease off when she collapsed live on air while filming her show, making jokes about the scary incident. And he denied her entry to his tycoon pool party. But there is hope. When asked to say three nice things about 50 Cent, Wendy pointed out that she probably had a hand in his success. She played his music when he was an up-and-coming rapper in New York. She went against the station's set playlist, which was a no-no, and got suspended without pay as a result. She believed so much in him as an artist, she was willing to take that chance and didn't regret her decision. He's not a bad looking man. I respect his hustle. And I was one of the first people to ever play his music, as a matter of fact, probably the first, on a cassette on the radio where I got suspended for two weeks without pay because I used to be a renegade like that. If I liked it, I'd take it right off the block. Why'd they suspend you? Because I'm playing music that's not in the playlist. Like, uh, I was that girl. Yeah. Lock the door. Nobody can come in. This is what I like. So knowing that you were one of the first people to play his music, eh, does it piss look, you off look, that he comes after you? No, I understand him. Post in the video, 50 captioned his post. What is this? Okay, we're gonna let you in tycoon next time. But you can't just be coming to my parties with no invite. That appeared to be 50's way of extending an olive branch towards Wendy, ending their rift. But it seems he's back to his trolling ways, trolling Method Man as we speak. Which Wendy beef do you remember the most? I couldn't cover them all because this video would have been really long. Now, did you have a nose job? No. It looks like you had a nose job. No. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I just looked at before and after. Honey, before and after. Before and after pictures. But, but <laughs> if I can suggest, because the only thing that I've had done to my face is a little Botox, I would suggest for you some Restylane, the line stay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to click the bell for more.